In 1962, Rachel Carlson authored a book called Silent Spring, and the title of this book reflects the declining numbers of songbird populations throughout the world as a result of the use of insecticides and pesticides. Now, Silent Spring set off a wave of environmental legislation and boosted what at the time was a fairly new ecological movement. You fast forward to today, almost 60 years later, and although some of those forever pesticides like DDT have been banned for agricultural use, there are still traces that persist around the world, including in our plastics that are in the oceans. The next generation of pesticides that actually replace DDT can also be considered persistent because we are exposed to them every single day. Pesticides surround us. They can be found in our food supply and are used extensively at our parks and golf courses, in addition to pest control inside our buildings and our homes. And 90% of our water from environments worldwide is contaminated to some degree by pesticides. Now, like most chemicals, pesticides have not been studied for their long-term effect on human health. However, we do know that pesticides work on the nervous system of the insect, basically incapacitating it. Studies have shown that exposure to the pesticide chlorpyrifos during pregnancy, even in small amounts, can harm the developing brain. Lifetime damage can include reduced IQ and delayed development of motor and sensory functions as well as social and behavioral dysfunction. And in one study, researchers tracked children of farm worker parents whose children are exposed to chronic low doses of pesticides before they're born and in the first years of their life. And they had a higher risk of neurodevelopmental problems like autism than children who are not exposed to these chemicals at all. At the other end of the spectrum, in older adults, studies have found an association between exposure to certain pesticides and a higher risk of Parkinson's disease. And those pets we love so much. Even careful use of a pesticide product can cause harm to a sensitive, ill, or an injured animal. So we all need to look for ways that we can reduce our exposure to pesticides, not just from an abundance of caution, but I think more from an informed position. One solution is a high quality doormat that can actually capture any of that residue on shoes or paws. And it also makes sense to try to choose organic foods when you can. Strawberries, apples, and grapes are especially important because they're soft skin fruits and because they're soft skin, they can absorb pesticides more readily. Changes like these may prevent some exposures and may even help to offset past exposures over time. In Sweden, a grocery chain enlisted a typical Swedish family to participate in a fairly short three-week experiment, switching from conventional food to organic food. The first week, they ate their typical, traditional, non-organic food. And they took daily urine samples, which showed that eight of the 10 pesticides measured in the study showed up in their system. After switching to 100% organic food for just two weeks, their samples showed that almost all of the pesticides were gone. So awareness leads to change. And in some areas, neighbors are actually banding together to create pesticide-free zones. And that's where pesticides are never being used just for beautification, say, of a park. The European Union determined that there is no safe level for chlorpyrifos and actually banned its cell. Health Canada has proposed a ban on this pesticide for uh, almost all uses, and there's actually a growing movement to ban it within the US with some states already putting regulations in place. In the meantime, make it your practice to avoid using pesticides in your home and to reduce your family's exposure to pesticides whenever and wherever you can.